Welcome back to the channel. Now today I have a Canon 7D, the original 7D for review. Now this DSLR was released in 2009, so as of today, the 1st of January 2023, it has now just gone past 13 years old. Now it features uh, an 18 megapixel sensor, APS-C CMOS sensor in this DSLR and it has 19 focus points of which the contrast detect and phase detect uh, autofocus points in it and it also has a ISO range of 100 to 6400 which is expandable to 12800 but I wouldn't go above anything more than about 1600 um, otherwise the shots get really a bit noisy but in saying that you could also use noise reduction software to eliminate a lot of the noise in higher ISO settings it has a 3 inch fixed screen, 950,000 dot LCD on the back. It doesn't articulate and it doesn't flip up or down. It's just flush against the body. But in saying that, it still works really well for reviewing your images and for delve, delving through all the menus uh, that you need to. So in that regard, it's, it's functional. Now, it does have a top LCD for quick viewing of all your settings, the current settings, once you've got it turned on. I'll turn that on. I don't know if you can see that on there. But it does have all the information that you need to um, see all your settings when you're out and about. Because once you've got it turned on, we've got the LCD turned off we don't need to have that display going at all you can have it turned on so that you can review your images but we haven't got that switched on now on the top of near the LCD there is four buttons three yeah, four buttons now there is a my glasses on <laughs> there is a metering slash white balance button there's an AF slash drive button and there's also an ISO slash exposure compensation button on, on there for quick um, control of those sort of functions there's also a button on there, a lamp button so that you can see you can light up the, the screen at night so you can see all your settings on the camera instead of having the back LCD blaring away um, in the darkness so you can have that set on, on if you wish. Now this being 13 years old and a DSLR it doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, it has an optical viewfinder so um, what you see in through the optical viewfinder is in real time there's no lag, no nothing like that, there's no flickering it's just pure um, optics through the lens um, and it does have 100% coverage in the viewfinder at a magnification ratio of 0 0.63 times. It can shoot stills at up to 8 frames a second and it also has video resolutions of uh, full HD up to 30 frames per second and standard HD up to 60 frames per second. I don't know the bit rate of it but I'm guessing it's going to be pretty low being that it's 2009 camera it's not going to be a very high bit rate. The body is weather sealed. Um, how extensive, I don't know. Um, I don't have access to any of that sort of information, and I'm not going to be testing it because this is a loaner. Um, this was loaned to me by um, my sister's um, partner. He was very kind to, to lend me the, the camera and a lens to test it out on. So thank you very much, Tony, for lending me your camera and lens and uh, yeah I'll take good, very good care of it. 
the body of this dinosaur, I mean, sorry, DSLR, um, it weighs in at 917 grams with the battery and a memory card in it. Uh, or just a little over 32 ounces for those of you in the United States. Now it measures 148 millimeters wide by 110, 112 millimeters high by 85 millimeters deep from there to there. Or five and three quarter inches wide by four and a half inches high by three and a half inches deep for all those of you in America. This has a top shutter speed of one over eight thousandth of a second and it's also got very good battery life um, which is rated at about 800 shots on a full charge but your mileage, your mileage may vary according to your conditions of shooting and some may get less, some may get more. Um, it depends on how you shoot, how much you review the images, how much you go through the menus, so on and so on. Now the shutter on this camera is rated to 150,000 actuations so it should give the average person a lot of use, many 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 years of use um, under normal circumstances. Under professional circumstances maybe not so many years but um, I've heard lots of stories of these sort of cameras, most cameras anyway, going well well beyond the um, shutter expectation life. Now using the Canon camera from a non-Canon user's point of view, as would be the case from anybody using any sort of brand of camera um, that you're not familiar with, um, it does take some getting used to. Every camera, um, every model has its quirks and features and this is no different. Yeah, one of the annoying things I find is using the menu where, turn it on, and I'm not sure if you will be able to see this, push the menu button, menu pops up. Now to highlight any of the different segments in the menu, you can either use the joystick to move it across to different sections, or you can use the front command dial to do that. Then you also need to rotate that command wheel at the back to highlight one of the selections and then press the set button in the middle. So I find having to toggle between using the joystick on the back or, or the command dial at the front, then using the wheel to rotate through the menus up and down, and then the set button, I find it a little frustrating. Maybe it's just the, the, the age of the camera, but more modern cameras, you can normally just push the, 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 the command wheel at the back, that, that jog wheel, whatever you want to call it, usually it has uh, like four buttons on it and you can usually, on most cameras nowadays, you can push on either side of it, scroll through the menus and then push the set button in the middle. And it's much, much easier, much quicker. Or a touchscreen, which this does not have. Now I'm sure it's just a matter of muscle memory. As with any camera, um, you get used to it after using it for weeks, months on end. You get to know where all the buttons are, the dials, and how to work them all. But if you're doing like reviews like this, um, it can be a little bit frustrating trying to remember which button does what, which command dial does what in the menus, things like that. Um, going from one camera to another, to another, to another, as you can understand. But it's more of annoyance from, from a reviewer's point of view, really. Um, like I said before, if you if you bought the camera and you're using it day in day out, you get used to it. Um, like I said, it's just muscle memory. Now ergonomically, um, like most Canons and Nikon's particularly, they've honed their designs over years, decades, to the point where they're comfortable in your hand and everything feels comfortable. You can hold it with one hand, no problem. There's a little bit of a, 
an indentation where the, the thumb rests in there. So when you're holding it, you can hold it one-handed and you can do most things with one hand. Um, this one at the moment is set to back button focus, which you can still use one-handed. It's maybe not so easy if you're not used to that, which I'm not. I never really used back button focus, but some people love it, some people don't. I'm one of those who don't really particularly enjoy using that. I find that holding your shutter button down halfway with continuous autofocus works pretty much the same way. And, um, and then you're ready just to hit the button. Whereas this one, you've got like two buttons to hold. You've got to hold the AFON button with your thumb and then when you want to, to release the shutter, push the shutter button. Two fingers you've got to use to do the job where by just using the shutter button only, you're using only one finger to do the same job. But that's just my preference anyway. So overall user experience. Um, it's, it's been pretty easy to get used to it. Because I've used DSLRs in the past, but not for probably about oh, eight, nine years maybe, since I switched from DSLRs to mirrorless. And to be honest, I haven't missed the large format of a DSLR, nor have I missed the electronic viewfinder. I find that, sorry, the optical viewfinder. I haven't missed the optical viewfinder. <laughs> I do love the electronic viewfinders of modern cameras. They give you a preview of any changes you make in, in, in the camera um, to your images. You can preview it straight away, either by the viewfinder or by the LCD, which is, uh, to me, is um, beneficial for me anyway. I, I like to see what I'm changing, um, how it's affecting the image, whether you need to boost the saturation, sharpness, um, the shadows or whatever it is um, you can do that and still look through the viewfinder and see your changes immediately um, but yeah the overall experience of using it it's been um, pretty positive overall even though it's a 13 year old camera as of you know beginning of 2023 it still has its place um, for many people uh, especially if you're coming from just using a cell phone and you want to step up and get better image quality, you can buy something like this or even a more budget-friendly version, save a bit of money and buy a lens or two um, for a more budget option, which will be both cheaper, lighter, and um, sometimes a little bit smaller because some of the entry-level cameras, they have slim them down a little bit more this is quite chunky um, so, so yeah nearly a, at nearly a kilo just for the camera it's still quite bulky heavy sort of camera to lug around and this is only a small lens by the way too um, which is the 50 millimeter f 1.4 version and I should give you some specs on that the lens is, like I say, is a 50mm f1.4 EF mount, of course, because it's an EF mount camera. Um, it has an autofocus, manual focus switch, but I find that even in autofocus, with the camera turned on, even in autofocus, you can just grab the focus ring and change the focus if you want to. You don't have to rely on the autofocus or switch it to manual focus, I should say. Um, it will do that regardless of what setting it's on. Then that lens weighs 266 grams and it is, or 9 ounces for you guys in America, 70 millimeters in diameter or 2 and 3 quarter inches by. 55 millimeters long or two and a quarter inches long for you guys in America. So it's quite compact and, and it focuses pretty quick. It's fairly quiet. 
quieter than the f1.8 version and a big step up in terms of image quality as well. So you'll get um, sharper images, quieter, faster autofocus from a lens like this. Um, like the 50mm f1.8 is more like a kit lens, but it's um, it still gives pretty good images. Um, but yeah, you want to step your game up a little bit and really blur that background out, as you'll see in some of these photos I've taken. You can really obliterate the background uh, into just nothingness really. So I hope you have all liked the review of this Canon 7D from 2009. Any comments or corrections to the info I've provided, please leave them in the comment section down below. I welcome all criticisms or comments, good or bad. Um, I'm always trying to improve my quality of my videos. If I've given the wrong information, I apologise, but um, I'm sure if I have, you'll correct me in the comments down below. But please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified when I post new videos. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time. So bye for now.